songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. <laughs> Let's try it again. Your word is Hosanna. Sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. Sing songs that are unashamed. Hosanna. Sing songs without being afraid. Hosanna. Sing for the God of tomorrow and today. Hosanna. Let us worship the one worthy to be praised and welcome. Welcome to our holy Holy Chaos Sunday, as we celebrate Palm Sunday this morning. It will feel different. It will look different. You are welcome to get up and move at any time. The kids are absolutely welcome here at the front. We have uh, seats of choice on the cushions. If you consider yourself a child, you are welcome there too. Um, you guys are going to help with some storytelling later, I hope, which would be great. We will have songs, we will have story, we will have reflection. We have all the pieces of worship, but we have them in a way that celebrates our kids and their ability to be with us and to worship with us. And I invite you to worship in a different way. We bring all of who we are, all of what we are together, and we celebrate that each of us is different. We have different abilities. We are at different stages in life. And yet God is with each of us in all stages. I'm going to hand it over to our youth who recorded our land acknowledgement last week as we settle in and recognize the land that we worship upon this morning. We join them in caring for God's creation, sharing stories and creating a welcoming place for all God's people. And so now we turn to all of the things happening in this place and beyond. It is a busy place with lots of announcements. I will try and get through them quickly but so that everybody's aware. And of course, always check your Norval online for all the details and everything going on. But a very, very big thank you to Jen Auger and all of the children and youth for today's service. And thank you to all those from the staff team and beyond who offer their gifts and leadership each and every week. We also give thanks for those who greet, uh, offer refreshments, and all the ways that Norval's hospitality is so graciously shared to all. We move into Holy Week with this Palm Sunday service, and this week we have a number of special services in preparation as we move towards Easter. Uh, there will be a service on Monday, Thursday, and in person only with a drop-in supper from 5.30 to 6, and a brief family-friendly service at 6.15. Just a note, there will not be a games night that evening because of our Monday Thursday event. Also, Good Friday will be live streamed, so you're welcome here in person or to watch online at 10 a.m. We're going to have some special guests and lots of leadership from the congregation, so we hope that you will join us for that service. And on Easter Sunday, we will have our 9 online service and 10 in person with the flowering of the cross. So please, join us and know that we wish you all Easter blessings, whether you're with us or perhaps away celebrating with friends or family. The Italian dinner is coming up here at Norville on April the 6th. The last day for tickets is March 31st. So please see Bruce or Heather for tickets. And I believe there's also a table in the foyer that I know you're eager. And if you haven't got your tickets, that's the place to get them on your way out this day. Uh, we also are very excited because the Georgetown Lions Club is pleased to present Georgetown Citizen of the Year to Reverend Paul Ivany, who you all know and love, and they'd love to have you join the Lions in honoring Paul at the awards dinner. It is this Tuesday, March 26th. Tickets are $50 and include your dinner, and there are all the details in Norval Online, and please, if you haven't had a chance, do take a look at that. 
Also, we were asked to share again that May 4th is the hike for hospice. And this year, the United for Hospice is organizing a hike in Georgetown on Saturday, May 4th, starting at 10. We will be the starting site here at Norville. There will be two routes, two and five kilometers in Georgetown South. And there is a team site for walkers from our four churches. And you can join them by registering at the link in Norval Online or by sponsoring one of our team members. So please think about that and hopefully you can take part in whatever way works for you. And finally, do you have items that you want to sell? Norval United Church is hosting their trunk sale on Saturday, May 25th from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. And this is a great opportunity to declutter your home and make some extra cash. If you're interested in participating, the cost is $20. And to reserve your spot, please contact Helen McGinn, Bruce Cunnington, or Lynn Brennan. There's also a sign-up sheet in the gathering space. And I think that's all I have. I don't know what Ginny, is Ginny here? Yep, Ginny has an announcement from Transition Team. Good morning, everyone. On Sunday, April 14th at 3 p.m., Norval will be hosting a very special worship service celebrating Reverend Heather's new ministry with us. I know um, you would all like to join um, in that celebration. The covenanting uh, service is held outside of the Sunday morning regular service, so members of the wider church can participate and attend, as well as other important guests. It's our opportunity at Norval to come together and formally celebrate Reverend Heather's call to us, and we of course want to see all of you there. It would mean so much to Heather to have as many normal folks as possible in attendance. And the service will be live streamed. So thank you to Phil um, for organizing that uh, so that our online community um, can join the service as well or if you are unable to join. Heather's longtime friend and former colleague, Joe, will be the guest speaker. So here is your chance to get all the good Heather stories and organize some dirt on her. <laughs> um, of course, there will be cake provided by the transition team and coffee and some treats because what is a Sunday afternoon church event at Norval without good treats? Of course, um, so please, we are asking you to mark your calendars for April 14th at 3 p.m. and show the wider church Norval's can-do uh, spirit and give us this opportunity to celebrate together. We hope to see you then. Thanks, Ginny. And so why don't we stay in a time of celebrations and move to our celebration candle. This is an opportunity for us to lift up our own personal celebrations and highlights. Maybe there's some special birthdays or anniversaries or other events that you're thankful for and want to share this day. And if you do, I just invite you to raise your hand and I will come to you in just a moment with the mic. Oh, hello. the celebration. Do you want to tell me what it is and I can share it? Or did you forget? Do you have a birthday coming up? Yeah. A baby shower. What day is that happening? Do you know? No, but it's special. So a baby shower is happening, which is very special and you're feeling excited. So that's something exciting to celebrate. Another celebration. A few days ago, it was my sister's birthday. Oh, and how old did she turn? Three. Three! Happy birthday! Amazing. Three is a big deal. Our niece is turning 10 on the 4th. Ooh, double digits. Excellent. Our oldest granddaughter will turn 25 on the 29th, but she was born 
on a Palm Sunday. Oh. So she gets two birthdays. Lovely, wonderful, happy birthday to her. I'm gonna, <laughs> sorry, there we go, thank you. Vince has a birthday on Wednesday. Ah, <laughs> happy birthday. I became, oh sorry, adopted grandma the second time to a grandson last week. Oh, congratulations. Um, this is on behalf of Ashleen, who sends her best. Uh, last night, her, along with her sorority sisters and fraternity brothers, participated in the Relay for Life at Trent University. Their team was the top fundraiser. They raised over $600 for cancer research. And I, as a personal note, I would like to point out that uh, she, after pulling a 10-hour shift overnight at One City, Peterborough, went and stayed up all night last night and walked over 30 laps, <laughs> lots and lots of laps. So she was up almost 22 hours and still had a smile on her face this morning. Aww. Good for her. Lovely young. Yes, that's amazing. I celebrate everyone who participated last night as a chorister or a musician uh, or as audience member in the uh, fundraiser at Acton Town Hall for the Bishop Smith uh, respite center. We raised a lot of money, so mm -hmm. just want to let you know that it went well. Wonderful. I'm coming back that way. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, next week we're going to be celebrating this little guy Hudson's second birthday, and he was born on his dad's birthday. Oh, happy birthday! So wonderful. Go. Oh. <laughs> Someone close to my family is um, having a new baby, and she will be a great grandmother in her early 70s. Wow, congratulations. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to sneak past you. <laughs> there we go. It is Ron's grandson Cam's 18th birthday today. Oh, happy for 18. Exciting. I will turn it over to you. With thanks on our lips and in our heart, we light the Christ candle. The flames of our candle are a visible reminder of invisible grace. The light that Jesus brought into the world, the presence of the Holy One made real by our gathering and community, in vulnerability, in curiosity, and in hope. Kids and I get together. We don't just sing one song and then sit down. We sing multiple songs together. So we're gonna start with a song that's very familiar to these guys, less so to you, and then we'll flip it and we'll do one that's more familiar to, do, to you and less to us. So my friends, we're gonna sing Fill My Cup. You guys know the actions. Would you like to flip the chart? Excellent. John Luke is gonna flip the chart. We're gonna fill our cup, let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. And we have Alan on piano now. And you are welcome to stand. I can't play guitar and stand. So I will leave that up to you. Fill my cup up, let it overflow. Fill my cup up, let it overflow. Fill my cup up, let it overflow. I really like the tune you're on, but I think we're on different notes. <laughs> so we'll start here so that I know what we're singing and you guys can follow along. Uh, 
a plan. I'm going to sing what you're playing. <laughs> I'll start. And then Alan will join in, otherwise I'll sing what he's singing, and it's not what I know. <laughs> you guys know this, though. Fill my cup up, let it overflow. Fill my cup up, let it overflow. Fill my cup up, let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Let's do that again. Fill my cup. Up, let it overflow, fill my cup. Up, let it overflow, fill my cup. Up, let it overflow, let it overflow with love. Switch it up to Jesus loves me. Here we go, Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong in his love shall be strong. Fill my cup, friends, fill my cup. Up, let it overflow. Fill my cup. Up, let it overflow. Fill my cup. Up, let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Last time, harmony. Fill my cup. Fill my cup, let it And our second song, we will stand for. I'm going to ask Lily to come on up and lead us in prayer. Oh, excellent. Dear God, we are made to praise you. Help us to shout and sing our praise to you, even when it doesn't make sense. To the world, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lily. So we're going to share our story. And some of you have spoken parts, and those are up here. So Gabby T. and John Luca and Ivy, I have you here. The rest of us, though, I wonder if we can be mimes. 
Can we be people in a crowd and disciples of Jesus? Do you think you guys can do that? Yes, excellent. So I'm, you know what? I'm gonna invite you guys to come up and we can be disciples in a crowd up here. And then I will have our readers come to um, come and talk here. Because <laughs> then we can hear you. Come on up. So holy chaos means that nobody's rehearsed anything. Uh, we are just going to tell the story, and we're going to tell it as it is and however it happens. And this is a story from Mark 11, verses 1 to 11, starting with Gabby T. And... You are there. Okay. Okay. All right. My disciples, come on over here. Because let me set the scene. Jesus is about to come into Jerusalem. So he's still outside of the city, but he's got to find a way in. And it's really exciting. And there's going to be a party and a celebration this week. And this is the story of that. So we're kind of excited. And we're with Jesus. And we're getting ready to figure out a way into the city. Sound like a plan? Okay. So Jesus is going to be over there, so we should probably find out what he's going to do. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus called his two disciples and said to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. <laughs> they went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? Jesus said we should take it. When they told them that Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it, then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting. Ooh, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Is that the end of the story? Oh, that's me. Who's the person who don't, doesn't know what they're doing? Thank you. Thank you, disciples. They did look confused, right? That's what we were going for. We were going for the confused look, and we did it. Um, thank you, readers, for the word of God in the story, and for the word in play, and for the word of God among us. For the word of God within us, we give thanks. So I have some books today. And I, you know I love books, but I couldn't decide which book we were going to read today. Because I was looking for a story of somebody who was a disruptor. What is a disruptor? What do you think? Does it sound like a good thing? What do you think, Abby? Abigail? Yes. If they're, if they, if, oh, what? Yes, they can disrupt you by talking. They can distract you, too, when they do that, right? I get distracted very easily. What? So disrupting doesn't sound like a good thing. So, but this is a box of disruptors. This is a box of people who looked at the system and said, we should do it differently. But the way they disrupted was in a good way. So here, maybe you guys can each hold one of my books. Would you each take one of my books of disruptors? Here we go. George, would you take a book of a disruptor? Would you like one? Some of you have probably heard some of these books. I bet you I have shared these stories before. <coughs> Whoa, bless you. Uh, who am I missing? Would you like a book? There we go. Oh, 
Gabby, there's a good one, white flower. Would you like one? Who needs, else needs a book? Excellent. Uh, who do I have? Oh, I have Phyllis. I have Phyllis Webstat. Um, who do we have? We switched. We switched. Excellent. And so I'm going to read this one now. Okay. Does anybody, is anybody able to read the title of their book or who their book is about? Who is your book about? It's Mal... Yeah, I know. It's hard with Malala. The girl who thought in pictures. We have Malala and her magic pencil. And Reina has Wangari's Trees of Peace. Ivy, who do you have? Nyongo. Yes. We have Be the Change. And we have Martin Luther King Jr. Who el what do you have, Abby? Or Gabby? <laughs> White flower. So white flower is about a crowd of people who are clowns. And can you show me your story? You have a story about Hiawatha and the peacemaker. John Luca, who do you have? And Frank. Frank. Who do you have? Can you tell? Our house is on, fi Our house is on fi fire, and that's the story of Greta Thunberg. And George, who do you have? I don't know. We don't know. We have Kamala and Maya's big idea. They build a garden in Toronto when they were children. And do you know who Kamala is? Are these, are these the two guys? Those are the two yeah. girls at that point. Now they're women. Kamala is now the vice president of the United States of America. How about that? And a long time ago, she built a garden, a community garden. So we've got lots of people here. They all brought change in a different way, didn't they? I wonder, can you think of anybody else who has created change in some way? We have people who have written stories and planted trees, who have become uh, celebrities, but also worked for inclusion. We have people who worked for peace. Can you name anybody else that you know who's done something to bring goodness to the world or hope to the world. I'd, I'll open that up to anybody. Who's somebody? Who do you think? Yeah. Um, uh, oh, a painter. Oh, there are some painters who've done some amazing things, not just with bringing art, but changing the world, bringing peace. Frida Kahlo is one person that I think who changed things with her art. Are there any other people that we can think of? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus brought good to the world, kind of in a disruptive way. Absolutely. Other people? Yeah. The Ditz family, yes, with their uh, foundation, I have resolve. Absolutely. If I stand up, I can see more hands. Are there other people? Yeah. The Property Brothers. How do they bring about change? They bring goodness. They do. They change people's lives by making their homes better for them? Absolutely, great. Other people? I liked how we were going towards the ditzes. We can think of famous people. Famous people get books written about them. Not every disruptor gets a book written about them. So who are other people that you know? Maybe more local, yeah. Yes, so those who are part of the G-Force team who are helping to welcome newcomers and refugees here into the community. How about other people that you know? Yep. Our Affirm team, absolutely, here, yes. Creating inclusion and a space that is safe, yeah. The hospice team, absolutely, yes. Caring for end of life, and all the needs that arise with that, Beth, yeah. Yes, yes, amazing resource teachers, including Amy, who work with kids with special needs, meeting their needs, helping them figure out how to do that, for sure. Yeah, Andy. Reverend Paul Ivany, absolutely. 
Absolutely bringing up much change. Yeah. Each and every one of us, amen. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yes. Teaching other people to be kind. You know what? Whenever any one of us does that, we are a disruptor. You and you and you and me, we're all disruptors. We might not have books written about us, even these beautiful books, but every time we teach kindness, every time we shake a hand, every time we smile, even if we're feeling sad, every time we reach out and be friends, we are disrupting for love and we are holy disruptors. And that's what Palm Sunday is all about. It's remembering that each one of us is a person in that crowd that long time ago, even though the story seems so far away, each one of us is a person in that crowd. And we have to imagine, what is it that we are cheering for? And how are we gonna bring good? So I think, oh, we wanna do our blessing though before we invite the choir up, right? So let's think. Let's think of somebody that we could send some love out to because even just the act of blessing, whether we are with the person or far away, even just that act of sending good intentions out to that person is disruptive. It brings love into that space and into our hearts. So let's think of somebody who could use a hug today, who could use a friend, and let's send our blessing to them. May there be love in your heart to give May there be joy in your heart to share. And may there be courage in your heart to lift others up. So I will invite the choir to come and share the gift of song with us. And you guys can keep reading the books. This is great.
The boring part for the kids, but I'll keep it short. I once heard of this innovative Palm Sunday celebration. Instead of palms on a Sunday morning, people brought protest signs to their Palm Sunday parade. And I know that might sound a little strange, but biblical scholars will often tell you that chances are that Palm Parade was actually a peaceful counter protest to an empirical or an imperial. Um, parade done by the representatives of the Roman Empire coming through the main gates on that on that day and so when you look at the Palm Parade in that way you know maybe protest signs make sense we often get caught up in the celebration of Jesus's entrance in Jerusalem we sometimes overlook really how political it was for him and his followers to do that and to stage that and so we forget that Jesus himself was a holy disruptor and the people greeting him along the way, that's you with your palm branches, they were excited to see a new system challenge the oppression and the power of their time. So what do you think a palm parade would look like to welcome Jesus in today's time? And what oppressive systems might those crowd or those people or that crowd be challenging today the thing is Jesus's ideas of God weren't just disruptive to the people in power they disrupted even his friends and followers we've followed Peter here for the last several weeks Peter with his questions and his doubts his fear and his faith he moved from a follower to a student to a disruptor himself and that is where we find the resurrection, but I'm getting a week ahead of myself. It's important on this week that we remember that Peter never set out to be a holy disruptor, just as none of you set out to be a holy disruptor this morning. He probably didn't even see himself as one, nor did anyone else in that crowd that gathered the day that Jesus came to town any more than any one of us left the house this morning thinking we were going to be holy disruptors. But those who gathered, they were ready and open to witness the way of love through Jesus. And that in itself was disruptive. They were ready to believe that love could overcome fear and that peace could be found without any violence. Are you ready to believe that? I think I need to clarify a little bit this business of God's love because I think sometimes we see love as warm and fuzzy, hugs and kisses, chocolates and flowers, soothing, gentle, maybe even weak. But the disruptive love that Jesus taught about was not pretty and it was not cute. Jesus ate with anyone, especially those who were hated. Jesus healed anyone especially those who were discarded. Jesus forgave and gave voice to anyone, especially those who were invisible and forgotten. The love that Jesus taught was disruptive in that it challenged people to move towards justice, compassion, forgiveness, and especially towards stretching ourselves outside of our comfort zone. This type of love is disruptive because it's ugly, it's dirty, it's strong, it's fearless, and it's uncomfortable. So earlier we wondered who might be gathered in that crowd from today's world. We saw the pictures, the books of people who may have been in that crowd if it were to have happened through history. And we know that it is our faces that are here. We named people that we see today, knowingly, unknowingly speaking God's love to the world. Would you be willing to be in that crowd? 
we can lift up the Malalais and the Gretas and the Gandhis and the Martin Luther Kings, but God's desire is for each and every one of us to be a disruptor for love in some way in this world, whether it is the small scale within your circle of family and friends, whether it is on a community scale like G-Force and Affirm, whether it is worldwide. God's love is not kisses and hugs and flowers and chocolates. It is disruptive, it is strong, it is fearless, it is difficult. It gets dirty and it upturns tables. It sits at the table with the unwanted. It touches the untouchables. It forgives the fallen. It shouts justice to power. And in the disruption, we find the ongoing story of resurrection. Love that endures all of that ugliness to make beauty out of chaos. God needs us to be an active part of that. God needs us to be willing to stand in the crowd to wave our palm branches for love that can change the impossible and can endure the darkness. So you have palm branches. I want you to take those palm branches home with you today. I want you to write a message of love on that branch and hang it somewhere in your life, in your home, in your workplace, anywhere. There are thousands of ways to keep God's love alive in this world. Be bold and spread it fearlessly as J Peter did, as the crowd did, as Jesus did. Let that palm branch in your hand not just be a sign of celebration, but a sign of defiance. Defiance against despair and defiance against hopelessness. A reminder to have the courage to get dirty, to be strong, to be fearless, to get uncomfortable in the name of love. Know that each time we wave these signs of love into the world, hope for the earth, for each other, for ourselves prevails. So let's get those palms up one more time and let us wave that love for God into this space upon each other and know that we take that out into the world. With thanks, I'm gonna invite Ivy to come up uh, because we have a ritual, a tradition of giving thanks for our gifts, the gifts that we carry into the world. That's not what you're doing, you just come on up, you're good, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing our gifts is one of the ways that we disrupt with love. We have so many gifts to share. Gifts of time, gifts of money, gifts of talent, gifts of skills. And so we take time to offer gratitude each week for these treasures and for the ability to share these treasures with one another. With your support, we continue the important ministry at Norval and our commitment to being a place of inclusive welcome seeking right relations and caring for each other and our community. For our act of offering and gratitude today, we want to lift up the gift of camp and the impact that this ministry makes on so many of our children and youth in our community. And I've invited Ivy to come up because she is a longtime camper. And I've asked her on the fly to share a little bit about why camp is important and what this ministry does beyond ourselves. So I've been to camp since I was two years old. And that's very odd because you can't be at camp until you're at least maybe three or four. But we managed to get myself in somehow. Um, and one of my greatest memories is a lot of the water activities that we did and how inclusive they were and how they would try and give us a whole bunch of teamwork activities that would actually work because you'd go to so many other places and you'd be like, oh, well, I don't want to do this. And the kids would give you a whole fist about not wanting to do it or not liking it. But Norval actually made it really fun and the kids actually really enjoyed and were participating. And when I was a, when I was a kid, I remembered a whole bunch 
of those memories. And then that just made me smile to see that it was still going on now. Thanks, Ivy. So each week there is, there are plates at the back on tables to collect your offering if that is something that you bring with you. But let's give thanks. Let's show our gratitude one last time, our gratitude for each of these gifts that we bring, each of these gifts that in some way disrupts for love by yelling out Hosanna on three as thanks and gratitude. One, two, three. Hosanna. Awesome. I am going to ask Gabby A to come on forward and Abigail and Heather uh, is going to lead us in the prayers of the people. And so friends, before we come together in a time of prayer, we give opportunities in community to share the yearnings, the struggles, and the joys of our lives. And so we want to give an opportunity this morning for those who may wish to share a prayer concern with us to do so. For those who are worshiping with us online this day, please know that although we won't share your prayer concerns live this morning, we will share them with the prayer team, and I'll certainly be checking them later as well. But anyone here in person, if you have a prayer concern, we just invite you to raise your hand. And I'm not sure if, is there someone that wants to be a roving reporter? Or do we want one of our young people to do it? I don't know. I think you're, are you first? I think, are you? I think you are, so we won't make you run. <laughs> All right. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so anyone with their hand up, if you don't mind going with the mic, thank you so much. And they'll share. Just, con just continuing prayers from my, uh, from last week for my aunt who, um, was unable to use her legs and such. She has had a stroke and not sure whether she'll get her legs back, but she definitely has lost use of her right arm. Um, and my uncle who had fallen last week is now in hospital with low oxygen. So we're praying for that family. My, my cousin is by herself to deal with this. So it's, it's been pretty hard. Just, um, my husband and I are traveling to Kentucky to see my mom uh, on Tuesday, so for travel mercies. For everyone that struggles with mental health. Um, for my father, who has congestive heart failure, um, but that he's doing well now. Prayers for our friend Bob, who's having surgery tomorrow. Well, friends, let us take these and all of the prayers that are upon our hearts this day into a time of prayer and reflection. Holy One, how can we sing love success when there are so many reasons for discouragement, damaged, weak? God of resurrection, you are our cornerstone, the foundation of our strength and hope. You call us to be bold, disruptive witnesses to your love. Help us live with the strength and might of your love. Maybe it costs for our speaking out. Help us to overcome our fears with your peace. Help us with your spirit that we may share the resurrection and find our voice. We are witnesses to your ways, God. May we be inspired to speak for justice and love's agenda. When others would seek to silence love, may we find the strength and the peace in you to find our footing and raise our voices. Steadfast God, we place our prayers into your care, those we have named and those we cannot put words to. Entrusting these into your love, we do this with the prayer Jesus taught his friends in life, and so we join together in sharing the Lord's Prayer. 
saying together, O oh God, who is within us, around us, and connecting us, may your name bring peace to those who hear it. We wish to be your hands, voice, and heart in this world as we try to share your love with all your people. Give us strength to face our struggles, humility to admit our mistakes, compassion for all those around us, and courage to walk your path every day. You are the heart of all creation and the source of all life. Across time and space, in you we trust. Amen. So we're going to sing together again. Uh, our first so two songs together, because that's how we do it with kids. Uh, our first song is from More Voices 121. It is Hey Now, Singing Hallelujah. This is new to the kids, so you will teach it to them. Singing hallelujah, hey now, the morning has come, hey now. Singing hallelujah, the tomb was empty at the rising sun. Jesus loved people and he made them friends. Hey, he, he called to the children, cool. Yeah, you can. Hey now, the tomb was empty, hey now. Singing hallelujah, hey now, the morning has come, hey now. Singing hallelujah, the tomb was empty at the rising sun. Jesus healed people and he helped them be well. Hey now, the tomb was empty. He taught about God in the stories he tell. Hey now, the tomb was empty. Hey now, singing hallelujah. Hey now, the morning has come. Hey now, singing hallelujah. The tomb was empty at the rising sun. Jesus loved people and they said he was the king. Hey now, the tomb was empty. He turned all the tables on everything. Hey, now the tomb was empty. Hey, now, singing hallelujah. Hey, now, the morning has come. Hey, now, singing hallelujah. The tomb was empty at the rising sun. Jesus had power and they took him away. Hey, now the tomb was empty. Nailed them to a cross and they killed him one day. Hey, now the tomb was empty. Hey, now, singing hallelujah. Hey, now, the morning has come. Hey, now, singing hallelujah. The tomb was empty at the rising sun. Jesus loves people and he lives again. Hey, now the tomb was empty. He calls us disciples and he calls us his friends. Hey, now the tomb was empty. Hey, now, singing hallelujah. Hey, now, the morning has come. Hey, now, singing hallelujah. The tomb was empty at the rising sun. My friends, I wonder if you will come help me. Some of you who know the actions, because with my guitar, I can't do the actions. Would you come and help me? Okay. So it's me who builds community. And then we go clap, 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 hey. And then we're gonna roll over the ocean and roll over the sea and roll over the ocean.
the ocean in the deep blue sea and we're gonna go and do our part to build community it's me yeah here we go it's me it's me it's me who builds community it's me it's me it's me who builds community it's me it's me it's me who builds community it's me who Friends, the light of Christ is with us in worship. It is a light we are called to take to the world with us. May the smoke that rises from this candle be a reminder that the Spirit goes with us into this week, leading us and calling us to deeper faith and joy and love. And so go now and live in the spirit of hope and grace, even when you are led into wild and hard places. Whatever wanderings the spirit has brought you to, walk in boldness as a beloved child of God. Walk in peace under the shelter of the Most High and walk in faith, knowing that Christ walks with you. Amen. Amen. Gianluca, could you flip my page to One in Love? We have a closing song that is new. It has lots of actions. I don't expect everybody to get them all. But if you get one, then you're good. I, th I think it might be the one before. So the words are one in love, one in friendship true, one in hope, one in spirit too, one in faith that God will care for you till we meet together again. So if you get one, you are excellent. And we will repeat it. This is known in some Teze circles as a parting song. And while it's not familiar to us, may it strike a chord in your heart that we can leave together the space from here. One in love, one in friendship true, one in hope, one in spirit too, one in faith that God will care for you till we meet together again. We'll do it again. One in love, one in friendship true, one in hope, one in spirit too, one in faith that God will care for you till we meet together again. One more time, one in love, one in friendship true, one in hope, one in spirit too, one in faith that God will care for you till
we meet together again. Till we meet together again. Thank you to all of you for participating this morning. Big thank you. <laughs> What did you bring with you?